So this is video two for part B of your photosynthesis lab, which focuses on the Calvin cycle. So in uh, video one, you learned about the light reactions of photosynthesis, the first half. So in the light reactions, we took energy from sunlight and we used it to make ATP to store energy and also NADPH to store high energy electrons. So in the Calvin cycle, which is the second half of photosynthesis, we will use these molecules, the ATP and the NADPH, um, to build organic molecules. So plants will take carbon dioxide from the air and use it to build sugars, proteins, and all the other organic molecules that it needs. Um, so if you want to review this video later on, you can look at figure 10.19 from your textbook, because this is basically an animated version of that. All right, so let's get started. So the Calvin cycle always begins with three organic molecules already present, okay? So these three molecules have five carbons each, which gives us 15 carbons in total, okay? So that 15 carbons is important. All right, so in the first phase of the Calvin cycle, uh, we do carbon fixation, okay? So that means that we're taking carbon dioxide from the air, and with the help of an enzyme called Rubisco, we're going to fix these carbons onto these organic molecules. Okay, so the five carbon molecule now becomes a six carbon molecule. So this will happen for all three of these molecules. Okay, now these three molecules, however, are very, very unstable. So pretty much immediately, they will break into two molecules, each of which will have three carbons. Okay, so this splits into two pieces. and this one as well. Okay, so as a result, when carbon fixation phase is complete, we now have six organic molecules, each with three carbons. Okay, so the three carbon dioxides have now been incorporated in these organic molecules. So phase two of the Calvin cycle is called reduction. So we need to take these molecules and add energy and add high energy electrons to them so that they're ready to become a part of, say, glucose, okay? So the first step is we'll take energy from these ATP and transfer some potential energy to these molecules by phosphorylating them, meaning that we're going to break ATP into ADP, an inorganic phosphate, and that phosphate group will be transferred to each of our organic molecules, okay? So ATP is hydrolyzed, an inorganic phosphate group is added to each of our six three carbon molecules. Here's that six ATP that I used up. All right, so in the next step of reduction, we're going to actually reduce these molecules. Okay, so that means that we're going to add high energy electrons to add more potential energy to these molecules. So remember that each of these NADPH actually hold a pair of very high energy electrons. So when we split this to make NADP plus and the phosphate group, we release those two high energy electrons um, and reduce these molecules. So as we reduce them, the phosphate group that was added before will come off, okay? So in this process, it looks like we're going backwards and that we're just taking the phosphate group off, but know that we are adding two high energy electrons from NADPH into these, molecules, into these molecules. So as each of these split, we add two high energy electrons to this molecule and we lose a phosphate in the process as well. Okay, so split this, add the electrons, split. Split. And one more breaking off. All right. So what we have now here are six molecules of G3P. Okay. Now G3P is actually half of a glucose molecule. Okay. So if you look at cellular respiration, when you take a glucose during glycolysis and you break it into two pieces, what you get is two pieces of G3P. All right, 
So in theory, we can take these three and make three pieces of glucose, three glucose molecules. Of course, if we did that, we'd be taking all the carbon molecules out of the Calvin cycle, and we'd have nothing to, we, have, we would have nothing to add more carbon to from carbon dioxide. Okay, so we can't afford to do that. But since we did add three extra carbons from carbon dioxide earlier, we can actually afford to take one of these G3Ps and use it to make glucose. Okay, so we can, we've now made one G3P or half of a sugar molecule using carbon dioxide that was fixed by Rubisco. All right, so this gets taken away and used as part of sugar later on. Now these five will have to be going to phase three, which is regeneration. Okay, we're going to use these 15 carbons to regenerate those three molecules that we started with. Okay, it's a fairly complex process, which I won't go into the details of, but what you need to know is that we are taking these 15 carbons and rearranging them to get our five carbon molecule back, but along the way we also need to use three more ATP. Okay, so three more ATP split into ADP and a phosphate group, and that gets added on. So that's one of our molecules are back. Okay, another ATP is necessary. Break that. Add it on. Two. And the third one needs another ATP added back on. Oops. So notice that we now have our three organic molecules back, each of which have five carbons for 15 carbons total, and we're back where we began. All right? So I'm basically going to pause this video and I will reset it. I will go through it one more time and then it's up to you to, and your team to describe what's happening. All right. So here we go. Working with your team, describe each of the phases and what's going on uh, on screen as it happens. Okay? So phase one. Think about what it's called, what enzyme is involved, why this matters, where this happens in the plant, and what happens next. Phase one. So, what's phase two called? So, what's happening to the ATP here? And what's it called when I'm adding the yellow thing to this? What is the yellow thing? Why is this important? Second part of phase two, think about what these are. Okay. What is it that they carry? Okay. And what happens to those as we split this apart? So those of you who are paying really close attention would notice that I made a small mistake in the first video. I said that when we split NADPH, that NADP plus is released, and I said a phosphate group. What is this actually? Not a phosphate group. This is a phosphate group. So you will have my respect and admiration if you can correct me. All right. So NADPH, I'm removing something in order to transfer something to these guys. All right, now we have six of these. What happens to one of them? And where do those carbons come from? Okay, then think about phase three. What is it called and what happens? Okay, take 
some of these. Okay. Again, using what this is. What am I breaking it into? And what am I making? Again. So yes, you're repeating yourself a bit, but please do describe wow, what's happening along the way. And one last one. I break this. And what do we have in the end? And as a challenge question, you notice we have a whole bunch of ADP and phosphates. We have a whole bunch of NADPH and hydrogen ions. Yes. Good job, Fuego. You got it. What happens to those? What, is it just garbage? Does it go away? Where does it go? What happens to them? How do we use them again? All right, think about it, talk to each other, answer the questions in your lab manual, and sign up for a checkpoint conversation when you're ready. All right, thank you, see you soon.